as he would make it socially awkward. And atheists who think that people should proselytize, just leave you alone, keep your religion to yourself. Uh, how much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? You heard the very last thing he said. How much do you have to hate somebody not to share the gospel with them? That's what he, that's what he said. Hate somebody. So he's an atheist. And he's saying, I respect you Christians that go out and believe what you believe. But if you really believe what you believe, you believe there's a, a heaven, eternal life, salvation, yeah. peace, joy for the Lord. And there's a fiery pit called hell that you burn forever in torment, the Bible says. To not go out and share that gospel, not to go out and share that truth, how much do you have to hate people? Hate them. That's what he says. And so I, I was thinking about this, you know? I was like, I love Jim. I, I love coming and talking to you guys. But I don't hate none of you. But each week, we come in here, and we have Jim, and then we leave. And I love it. But not once have I asked anybody in here, are you saved? Is Jesus Christ your Savior? You know what? Today I'm going to ask you. And today, if you don't know what I mean, or you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Because it's literally the most important thing, the most important decision you could ever make. And for me to stand here and not offer that based on something like what he just said means I hate you. And I don't hate you. I want you to have what I've got. I want you to have what a lot of kids in here have got, a lot of adults in here have got. So real quick, I'm going to share a few things with you. There's a God in heaven who loves you, whether you know it or not. I went through my life and didn't understand he was there and he loved me even when I didn't even think about him. The heart of the human being longs for God and logic demands divine existence. As I was putting this together this Late last night, I, I thought about that, that sentence right there. You, you, you long to know why. Everything we do, we say why. And that is our just desire to understand why we're here in existence. And I don't believe that's a coincidence. I believe that's the Holy Spirit, that's God, wanting you to seek Him out. While everyone believes God is most sin, separation from God, we know God must be holy and good. But we see ourselves as unholy and not good. We conclude that God's angry. And we can't know Him because we're not doing right. We know when we sin. Whether you're saved or not, you know when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. And so typically that makes us shun or shy or stay away from God because we feel guilty and feel bad for what we're doing. Well, the good news is the testament of God's love and His Word tell us that He loves us as we are. And I'm so thankful for that because I'm broken. I don't do things right. I don't say things right. I don't talk to you right. I don't talk to my wife right. I don't talk to people at work right. I don't act right. I don't walk right. I don't look like a Christian 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So I'm really, really, really proud that he loves me just the way I am. And that love that sees us for who we really are, not broken, literally makes us his children. So have I got any Tebow fans in here? Tim Tebow? Woo! Woo! Tim Tebow? Okay. So, let me tell you a quick story. John, you know, everybody knows his verse, not his verse, but the verse that he shares about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let me tell you a quick story about Tim Tebow. Another ex-football player, won't believe his name, criticized Tim Tebow and said, you share your faith too much. I love you being a Christian, but quit ramming it down our throats. Quit that. And I love Tim Tebow's response. And his love his response. You know, you come back, and again, it was an ex-football player that said this about him, an ex-NFL quarterback, actually. And first thing Tim Tebow said is, wow, that, that guy was talking about me. He was awesome. I was one of his fans. And then he said this. He said, I do share my faith everywhere I go. And he goes, my faith in Jesus, my love for Jesus, is just like that, a love in a marriage. He said, when you get married, when you walk down the aisle with your husband or your wife, and you say, I do, and you say, I love you, honey. That's not the only time you say you love him. You tell him you love him each and every day. He said, my relationship with Jesus Christ is just that strong. I tell him I love him each and every day, and I share everyone that good news. 
I thought, what a great response. What a great answer. Rather than saying, oh, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Let me quit sharing that. And that's what so many people do today. Well, I'm not here to do that today. I'm not here to cram it down your throat, but I'm here to share something with you that's so important. I don't want to get in that car and drive away today and say, but I didn't tell them about how to get saved. <coughs> we hear about Jesus saying, God so loves the world. It's in John 3, 16. God's love has no limitations. He's so much more than we can imagine. He loves everyone, not just someone. Romans 5, 8 tells us that God loved us so that when we were in our sin, Christ Jesus came to die for us. And you need to really understand that today, especially if you're going to understand salvation. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This verse tell us, tells us that if people have sinned, we've fallen short of God's intended purpose for us. God made us to know Him, to receive His love, to love Him in return for what He's going to do for us. For love to be loved. For God to be God. And for humans to be humans, God gave us a choice. We can choose to love ourselves, which means sin, as we do each and every day. And our selfish pursuit. Not worrying about anyone around us. Worry about our relationships. Our friends. Our drama. And not once think that there's a bigger picture. That's our sin. In our sin we cannot know God and His love. The result of sin is we are lost. Separated from God. So what does separated from God look like? Last night in our revival at Central Baptist Church. The pastor got up. And he, he I'm, I'm saying, I'm gonna, he stole my thunder. He preached it first. He, he, he used this verse. It's Luke 16, 19 through 31. And he said this. And this is what separated from God looks like. And some of you that don't understand what that looks like, it means you're just not saved. Now let me explain to this. Explain to you what that really means. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at the gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed. With what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades in hell. Being in torment, it said, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime received you good things. And Lazarus didn't that matter bad things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in his anguish. And besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm, or a great divide has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. What that means, guys, is once, what all that means is you got your chance, you missed the opportunity, now you're in hell, and you're never getting out. That's what that says. And I don't know about y'all, I'm not trying to scare you this morning, but I'll tell you right now, that scares me to death. Because I don't want to ever think that I missed an opportunity to accept salvation. But I'll tell you, if you walk out of this gym today, and you miss that opportunity, then it's going to be your fault. I know i got to hurry. <coughs> Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages are just payment, a due reward. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be the righteousness of God through Him. And then the final verse I'll share with you. I know I've thrown a lot of verses to you, but I want you to remember this is Romans 10, 9 through 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm so proud they don't make say maybe, probably, hopefully, surely, we'll see, we'll vote on it, we'll get back to you. It says you shall be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulted in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulted in salvation. A person receives God's free gift of love and life by placing faith in Jesus Christ. To believe is simply to take God at His word. With our heart, whole belief, and we believe that Jesus is God's Son, who died for our sin on the cross and rose from the dead. Romans 10 13 says, For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So here's what I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to pray with you. And let me tell you something. You got an atheist that just talked in the video that said, me not share. If I really believe what I believe, me not share my faith with you means I hate you. So think about you and your friends, and if you've never asked your friends, what they say? And I know you don't hate them, but that's the atheist view on us as Christians. Stand up and be bold about it. So this morning, I'm going to, y'all pray for me, I'm going to be bold. 
And I want to give each one of you an opportunity to do something that maybe you don't or never had an opportunity to do. And that's accept Jesus Christ. Nobody else has with me. Father, I thank you for this morning. Father, though the time is short, and these kids got to get to class, the next few minutes is the most important minutes of their life, Father. Father, I know, I don't have to think, I know there's kids in here today that don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior. They're not saved. I know that. And Father, that scares me to death. I don't want to get in that car today and drive away and not present what I'm about to present. So Father, use me. Let me say nothing that would not give you honor and glory. Father, use me as a vessel, as a mouthpiece to say to these kids what you would have me say. Father, if there's any kid here today that's not saved, I'm just going to ask them right where they're at, with their heads bowed, while they're praying, along with me to pray a simple prayer. But I, it doesn't stop there, kids. You don't say a prayer and that's it. You've got to mean it in your heart and your soul. So, Father, give these kids boldness, gumption, will to be serious about this. Not let this be something, but to finally, for the first time in their life, understand what jam means. Jesus and me. Not just me. So right there where you said, I'm going to pray, you pray along with me. And you ain't got to say everything I say. You just pray in your own, in your own words. But it goes something like this. Father, I know I'm a sinner. Father, I know I'm broken. And Jesus, I just ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of all my sins. Because I sin every day. So Father, please forgive me for each and everything I do. Forgive me for the things I've already done and for the things I'm going to do. And Father, I believe, I know in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. And that Jesus died on a cross for my sins. I know that. And I believe that each and every day. And I know he rose from the dead, Father. That story of the cross, I believe it. I know it. And I love it. And I thank you for it. And Father, because of that, I ask you, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come into my heart. Right here in this gym in Pearl River County, Mississippi, I ask you to come in my heart and save me. So I can no longer, the only Jesus in me that I can show would be on a t-shirt. I can finally tell people I'm saved. I've got Jesus Christ in my heart. The Holy Spirit fills me up, and now I know what it's about. So, Father, right here where I sit today, just save me. Just come into my heart and save me. Father, these things I ask in your sweet holy name, in Jesus' name. Now, right where you're sitting, with your head still bowed, the next part's the most hardest part. If you prayed that prayer and you really, really mean it, I want you to stand up right where you're at. With your head still bowed. I want all the Christians praying, all the new Christians that just accepted Christ as their Savior to pray along with me. I'm just going to pray for you guys. Father, I thank you so much for these kids. Father, I thank you for the decisions that they've made. But this decision is not one that they can just be proud of here at Jam. This means nothing in the big scope of things. That they could go out into this world with all their friends, everybody around them is lost and dying and going to hell. And they can say, I'm saved. I've got Jesus Christ in my life now. And they can share that with them. It's just like the video says, to not share is to hate. And they don't hate nobody. So they're going to go out and they're going to share that. So Father, I bless these kids. Father, I pray you bless on these kids. And Father, we just love you this morning. And I ask that all the kids that just prayed that prayer accept Jesus Christ in their heart would come down to the floor with me right now. Right now. If you're standing up and you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, Come down here where you're right now. The rest of the Christians, that didn't stand up, just stay right where you're at. This group of kids out here on the floor that just accepted Jesus Christ, this is what jam looks like. I know I've got all that control when I see y'all late, but I really don't care this morning. It's so much worth it. Guys, I love y'all and thank y'all. I'm so excited for the decision that you made. Don't let it be one that you made just because of this t-shirt. Let it be one that you can go out here and you can tell your friends, your family, your church. If you've got a church, go to church. Tell your church, look what I did. Hey, look, I prayed. I accepted Jesus Christ. This isn't about religion. This isn't about being bad. This isn't about being Catholic. This isn't about being Lutheran. Whatever religion you are, it's about one thing and one thing only, and that's Jesus Christ. So be excited for him. Be excited for you. Be excited now that that 
that divide, that being separated from God that I talked about, does not affect you now. 